Taking a ferry from Key West, we arrived at Garden Key where Fort Jefferson sits on the island. We only have two days to stay on the island, so after disembarking, we immediately set up our campsite. This time around, we are joined by Ian and Rachel, our longtime buddies. There is a short supply of shade around the island, but we managed to choose a campsite among the cluster of trees just don't throw away from the beach. The area still looked a little rough due to a recent hurricane, Ian. Campsites are littered with hermit crabs which actually reminded me of one of Captain Davy Jones crew. It's time to annoy one of them. It was around 98 degrees Fahrenheit at the campsite and we were sweating a lot, thus the best time to explore the waters. Somehow this place looks familiar. Must be from playing Mario Brothers all those years of wasted youth. Even the water is eerily the same. Among other things, Dry Tortugas is well known for snorkeling and scuba diving. In fact, due to its shallow waters and treacherous reefs, a lot of ships were lost in this region dating back in the 1500s when galleons and pirate ships once navigated these waters.
Gas canisters are not allowed on the ferry, so it's either you bring with you those small solid fuel, just enough to boil water for dehydrated meals, or bring bags of charcoal. And that's just what we did. Ayan then enlightened us on the size limits of catching certain types of fish. A very well informed fishing enthusiast himself. We then shifted our topic to hermit crabs and how they got their houses by scavenging for empty shells. Nothing more satisfying than listening to ourselves, self proclaimed experts on crustacean subject. It turned out to be a beautiful and sunny day amid the bluish green waters of Garden Key as frigate birds soar above Bush Key, perhaps looking over their nests. These are strange looking migratory birds that nest nowhere else in the continental United States except for the islands of Dry Tortugas. What caught my attention was their wing shape. We then walk past what appears to be washed ashore fishing boats lined up along the shore. From afar, we observe Ian, like the old man in the sea, lured by the greatest catch of the day. Frustrated from returning empty-handed on his first try, we lift our body to the mercy of the sea. While the rest of us explore the fort's history. Fort Jefferson was built in the mid-1800s as a harbor for patrolling ships in the Gulf of Mexico. Located along one of the world's busiest shipping lanes, it serves to resupply or provide refuge to the ships during storms. Once catered to 2,000 people during its peak years, was gradually abandoned as its usefulness waned over time. 
It was later designated as a national monument in 1935 and upgraded to National Park in 1992, preserving its rich history and the surrounding islands around it. Playground to tourists and adventure seekers like us, we get to enjoy its natural beauty. Recognizing our presence in this moment is such a satisfying existence. We then marched like sentries on a Moroccan fortress in the middle of the desert, but in this case, middle of the sea. Sitting above the bastion, we waited and waited until the last speck of sunlight faded away. We then headed back to the dock where a triumphant fisherman awaited us. Mangrove snapper is the catch of the day. We cleaned our catch on the beach as we have to conserve our drinking water fully aware that there may be a nurse, shark, hurricane in the shallow waters. Dry Tortugas is made up of reefs, which makes it a perfect home for these sharks. People can swim with nurse sharks without incident, although the sharks will sometimes attack humans if they are antagonized, so they say. It's better to just keep your distance. <laughs> Fully gutted and sprinkled with salt and spices, everyone couldn't wait to get their hands on it. All this activity made us thirsty and long for a very cold drink. Lucky we brought along lots of ice and sodas. Dry Tortugas was named after turtles were spotted when Ponce de Leon explored these islands. Dry was added later on to warn sailors of no drinking water available. So if you want to come here, you need to bring with you your own water. We then huddled together in the middle of the campsite like the hobbits at Wittertop in Fellowship of the Ring and discussed the events of the day.
Pila ka minutos mo niya ipaglaro. Ano, i-edit to ah. Pati labot. Pila ka minutos mo niya ipaglaro. Sa ato mo lang pagbalik. Kala nga si Juan, si Rachel kay para para mabot yung tininches ay yusok to na katag yung tininches na. Ano ko, yusok to tininches. Ano-ano din niya. Ayun ko. Ayun ko, kitinitis daw yun. Yung isang ko ka to tininitis. Dili ka tong bagong kuha ba? Nangibog naman ko witch mo. Kuha mo ang tiyos. Asa na ni? Susubok pa yung tanong ako lagi. Ito sa? We brought with us adult drinks and were even tempted to catch more fish. Kuha pati yung isda, dahil pong tutungo sa dito. Kaya ako gano'n. Kaya ito sa dito. Kaya ito sa dito. The ferry to Dry Tortugas only carries 10 campers per day. We wanted to camp for two nights, but the return trip is already reserved full, thus we opted for only one night. We'll just have to make the best of it. History tells us that Dry Tortugas were frequented by pirates way even before Fort Jefferson was built, as a base for attacking merchant ships and also to steal turtle eggs and use adult turtle meat as currency for trade. Thank you. As other campers are hitting the sack, we were thankful and enjoying the bounty of the sea under the pale moonlit sky. Soon after we hit the sack, the silence of the night was broken by loud voices coming from the beach. Still groggy from lack of sleep, I mustered up the strength to investigate. The rest of the gang are very well aware of the commotion and stayed alert. Like DiCaprio crawling among the cannabis field in the movie The Beach, I was determined to investigate. From the safety of the bushes, I could make out flashlights and Spanish-speaking voices. Could this be remnants of Capitan Salazar in this modern age, I say to myself. Worse, yet, poachers ashore trying to evade authorities under the cover of the night. We were supposed to be just a handful of campers and few rangers stationed inside the fort. But as the voices got louder and louder, I barricaded the path leading to our campsite just in case they wander off. Few hours have passed before I saw partial silhouettes of uniformed officers from the fort emerge heading towards the beach. Soon after, a multitude of silhouettes followed them back to the fort. Only then, the beating of the drums in my chest diminished, and soon after, everything was quiet once again. We later found out the voices heard were Cuban immigrants who reached ashore on the beach next to our campsite. The rowdy crowd we mistaken early on were actually the sound of jubilation and relief that they reached the U.S. shores safe. Here the boat they came ashore still with some of their possessions.
These are some of the stuff the refugees brought with them when they arrived last night. Moments later, two of the asylum seekers were tasked to move the boat away from the south beach since it is a swimming area. This is the best time to walk the moat wall early in the morning where everything is calm and you get a place for yourself. You could also see clearly ample sized fish swimming in the moat. We have to pack up our gears early as we have to clear the campsite at 10 a.m. to give way to arriving campers when the ferry arrives. We then enjoyed our breakfast and good cup of coffee to start the day. We have a few more hours before the ferry arrives and have enough time to see more of the island. Now to explore more of Fort Jefferson. This arch hallway is worthy of a Scooby-Doo episode.
Port Jefferson stands on Garden Key. However, the sands along Garden, Bush, and Long Key shifts over time, changing the landscape of these three islands. We then hiked Bush Key and up to now still amazed how bluish green the waters are around the Keys. Dry Tortugas has a certain feel to it. You just have to be there to experience it. In time, we could see the ferry from afar as it approaches Fort Jefferson. Soon our time on this national park will be over and may take more years to come before we set foot once again on this island. About the same time, 41 men, women, and children who arrived on that small vessel were briefed by the Coast Guard. It still baffled me how they all fit on the small vessel El Dio. These ordinary people risk their life on the rough seas across open waters for very same reason we left our country to seek a better life. They will eventually be taken to the mainland to be given medical attention and hopefully provided residents if qualified. And in time given a shot of citizenship. I wish them well on their times of uncertainty and hope someday they too could contribute to this great country. The 
Coast Guard left the dock for the mainland. The first batch of tourists arrived for the day on a chartered plane unaware of the strange events that earlier transpired. Now that everything is back to normal, the boat El Bio joins the collection of fishing boats lined along the dock, testament to the strange but fascinating events around this national park. And for the rest of us, we thank you guys for watching.